Hello. Welcome to Black to Black Talk Show. I have different here. Uh, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for having me, Tina. Happy to be here. Oh. Hi to everybody out there watching. Yes, my name is different. Spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T. Okay. So how uh, how's your Juneteenth uh, weekend going? Busy, 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 busy. Um, yesterday, uh, Roland Martin, he had an event in here in Houston. And so I've been trying to make contact with him, uh, just trying to network and get my name out there here so I can get on his show. And so I went out there and did that. And today I'm meeting with you, lovely Miss Tina with the Black to Black talk show. So again, just happy to be here, putting in the grind and working. And uh, I don't know, just whatever you you want to ask okay. me, you know. Okay. Uh, so just tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us your story. Right. Okay. So again, as I stated, my name is different. I'm an author, motivational speaker, CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC. And we're a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain you guys all at once. So um, uh, I guess you say background, um, I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm 32 years old. Um, I guess as far as my hobbies, I love, you know, ATVing, traveling all over the world, um, reading, writing, meditating, you know, networking, spending time with my nephew. I don't know. I can keep going on, so just let me know. Just act yeah, I've I seen that you did some travel and you did some uh, uh, school out of state, right? Yes, I studied abroad um, back in 2012. I went to Kim Young University. Um, I spent about four months over there at the fall of 2012. And within that opportunity, I got to travel to eight other countries, including Europe and China and Japan. And that's where my travel book was planted. And uh, fast forward to a couple of years later, uh, I was traveling the world, you know, living life until the pandemic happened. And like everybody else, I had to get some way to sit down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, but it, it was a, a joy to do. I can't wait to do it again. Um, it's just how I would have, and I would have went back to traveling, you know, post pandemic. However, just life happened for me in 2021, you know, as I stated to you before, um, I lost five people back to back to back in my family and including my mother being the last person. She died in my arms the day after Christmas. And so um, I've been working on my mental health and making sure that I grieve healthily, healthy in a healthy manner, if you will, but not uh -huh. just for my mother, but, you know, for the other family members that I lost as well. And okay. so um, once I feel like, you know, I do that and have a grip on that, it's coming up on two years since she's passed. And so I think after, you know, maybe a couple of months or maybe even for this coming, you know, this December, I'm, that's my birthday month, I uh, usually travel. So maybe, you know, sometime again, I'll travel. Travel again. Okay. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. There's uh, so much stuff going on as well. So I have to be mindful of that too. Yeah. So uh, what are some new projects you got going, coming up or? Well, and, uh, I wouldn't say new, but I've been for for the for the latter part of my life or my like past two years now, 2021, been promoting my business and my book, um, which came about in a funny way. I it did so with me getting my mental health in check. And so um I guess how can I explain myself is just by telling a little bit about my childhood and how I came up. Um I guess if you can say just um, I came up, you know, with a pretty good childhood up until the time I was around 11 years old. And then, you know, me and my family, unfortunately, we ended up homeless on the street for the next three years um, to where we lived basically pillow to post, sleeping everywhere from, you know, cars, parks, you know, bus stops and shelters. And even at one point sleeping at a crack house um, until, you know, I was the age of 14 and the family members secretly placed me in foster care. And none of my other family members knew where I was. And, you know, for the first six months, I tried my hardest to come home. But it wasn't until I found out from another form of foster kid that, you know, if I stayed in, you know, the care and then I aged out, then the state of Texas would pay for my tuition to college. And so mm. right there, a light bulb went out in my head, and, you know, and I just had to use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts and just made that decision to spend the next four years in foster care. And that was, you know, a trial in itself because, you know, I got shuffled around in the system, had to, you know, unfortunately fight with a lot of kids, you know, coming up in their way as well as dealing with my own personal issues. And mind you, I'm a teenager just coming up, you know, trying to learn myself and learn the ways of life. 
yeah. so it was a lot to deal with. Um, but in the end, you know, God blessed me because I went through that situation and then I came out of it with the full ride to, you know, my choice of the college I wanted to go to. And I went to Sam Houston State University. Yeah. So big shout out to the Bad Cats. Uh, I yeah. went there and that's where I got the opportunity to study abroad. And like I said, I got to travel uh, to other countries within there, as well as uh, my motivational speaking book was planted with my own student organization. I started, uh, pay it for it. Um, we went to uh, different high schools, you know, talking about the importance of education to different students in there. I would share my testimony with them. And, you know, normally, most of the time towards the end, kids would come up to me and say, well, wow, I didn't know you went through that. I'm going through the same thing. Or I didn't yeah. know, you know, state of Texas would pay. I'm going to go to college now. And so that's yeah. where my motivational speaking bug was planted. You know, I know with my testimony and sharing it, I can inspire others. And so, um, but with all that being said and done, and, you know, and even graduating with a bachelor's degree in international business, you know, having two minors in economics and communication, even getting my master's in entrepreneurship, <laughs> even doing that and, and becoming a real estate agent, all that didn't mean a thing if I was still dealing with, you know, emotional trauma, trauma issues and things mm -hmm. from my past that plagued me and, and followed me throughout my childhood, throughout my teenage years, throughout my college phases and into my adulthood. Um, it, it, it came with me, a lot of the baggage. And like I said, uh, with coming up in that chaotic environment for me for three years, it was normal for me to see chaos. And when I was taken out of that environment, I was actually placed in good foster homes, you know, with Black families that were educated, had degrees, good mm -hmm. houses and good paying jobs. And I'd never seen that before. Yeah. I didn't know that there was an option for us until I had been exposed to that. And so that was also another reason what made me say, I'm going to stay in, you know, foster care and, 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 and do get out because you are mm -hmm. who you hang around. And so um, being placed in those situations, it was new for me. And I felt, you know, it was too good to be true. True, so, yeah. You know, nothing good lasts. And so you get these thoughts in your head that, you know, hey, I'm going to be the captain of my own ship. I'm going to decide when and where to navigate and when it's time to sink it. And that's just what I did. I had began, you know, a road of self-sabotage and it would mess up every good little thing that came my way. I had that mindset of, I had to get them before they get me. And, you know, I messed up a lot of good relationships and put a lot of, pushed a lot of people away and became that off-putting person that nobody liked to be around. Mm -hmm. And like I said, that followed me throughout my teenage childhood, excuse me, my childhood, teenage and college years and to where when I was an adult, I didn't know how to, you know, handle what I went through and it just carried on into my career-wise. Mm -hmm. There was a situation where I, um, had a meeting with a well-connected person and I, I let the you know negative thoughts in my head get to me you know and mm -hmm. telling me I'm not good enough and this that and the third and I ended up showing up late to that meeting on purpose and it left a sour taste in that person's mouth and they didn't really want to deal with me after that and for the longest years past I would sit back and dwell on that situation as, as well as other situations that I had sabotaged and mm -hmm. one day I had to look myself in the mirror almost looking towards 30 and just had to face that ugly truth that, you know, whatever I went through in my past as a child, as a teenager, you know, as a young adult, it may or may not been my fault. It may have not been in my control. But as an adult now, it is on me to fix that problem and, and, and change that situation. You know, I can't expect that persons or people who have hurt me in the past to come back and apologize or mend my broken heart. It's on me to fix. And so I just had to dismiss that notion that Black people don't do therapy and yeah. black right here went to go and do some therapy and in doing so um, that is what led to me writing the book and starting my business talking with my therapist they encouraged me to get back into writing and journaling and doing so um, mind you this is when the pandemic happens we're stuck in the house can't go anywhere mm -hmm. I'm bored I'm depressed I ain't got nothing else to do and then May 25th 2020 happened the day George Floyd dies um, and he's from Houston as well. I'm from Fifth Ward, he's from Third Ward. And so when they were doing the protest, I wanted to get involved. I even wanted to take my uh, nephew who was on the spectrum. I wanted to take him so he could be aware of what was going on. However, when the time came to, I didn't get cold feet because I was scared. However, I thought about it in a much bigger scheme of things as to where I wanted my voice to be heard, not just in this moment of time when this protest is going on. I wanted to be heard after this protest is done. I want my voice to be heard after I'm gone. So talking with God, praying with him and asking and meditating and, and 
asking him to show me what can I do to use my voice and, and to be heard and to get the word out there and what can I do to get people's attention and this is what he showed me you know I'd be sitting down watching you know movies and watching little clips it would come to me I would ask these questions what if and little by little I just start writing it out on paper I started this in June 2020 and by December 2020 I had the manuscript done and I took it to my lawyer. She read it, you know, gave praises and then asked that question that threw me off my high horse. You know, just, you know, when no matter how many degrees you got on your belt, no matter how much work you've done and gone all over the world, you're never too young, too old and, and have too many notches under your belt to stop or start learning new things and keep learning. Yes. And so she asked that question, well, what's the name of your business? And I kept telling her my book, the name of my book is What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift? And she was like, well, I don't think you understand. In order to sell a product to the public, you have to have an LLC, a, you know, a small business. And so I had to learn that, you know, mm -hmm. life come around, think you know everything and knock you off your high horse and, and let, remind you that you don't. And so I had to hit the ground running, uh, T, and, and learn a small business, how to run it in Texas. And by March 2021, Third Eye Entertainment LLC was born. And I came up with the name Third Eye Entertainment because for me, I'm very from a person that's very in tune with my chakras, I believe in chakra balance, chakra healing, meditation. Um, I'm also into exploring actual projection. And so I, I strongly believe when you have your heart and your mind in tune with one another, you're able to see things more clear. Yes. Pray for the spirit of discernment and God shows you what you need to do and what you have to do. You're able to accept it a lot better and, and, and do what you have to do in order to get to the next level of your life. So when you have your heart and your mind in tune, that's what we need to unblock your third eye chakra and to do what you have to do, whatever it is that you want to do in life. So that's what third eye entertainment comes from. Okay. So the entertainment part, what do you do for at the entertainment? What is that? So with, like I said, with third eye, we're again, a business that tries to bring social awareness to society through products and services. So as far as the service side, um, we talk about social issues, including, you know, systemic racism, you know, injustice, domestic violence, you know, child sex trafficking, LGBTQ issues. Um, every month I do a social awareness pertaining to that month. So for instance, you know, May is the month of mental health awareness. So on all month of May, I did upload the contents on our social awareness in regards to mental health. April is autism awareness month, you know, February, Black History Month, you know, something always going on. And so I do a social awareness blog in regards to societal issues that, you know, people often like to sleep under the rug and don't want to talk about. Uh, also, June is the month of HIV awareness, uh, as well as with pride. And so I'll be doing something. Uh, I have a collaboration coming up with a, a LGBTQ podcast, and this is my first one I'm excited to do. So I'll be mm -hmm. doing that one next week. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a myriad of things. I'm more than just one option. And as well as with the entertainment, like I said, I traveled all over the world, just about 50 countries. So on Fridays, I do my travel content. I just uploaded my um, trip to Costa Rica. Uh, I have trips like my trip to Nairobi, Kenya, Egypt, Colombia, mm -hmm. Ireland, you know, Amsterdam, okay. everywhere. So just, yeah. again, go to my YouTube channel, Difference World YT, come and learn and you'll see uh, all my other social media, uh, my, excuse me, my my content that I upload, as well as with the entertainment, I do pop culture reviews and movie reviews with my nephew as well. Okay, uh, so I know you talk, uh, you know, they're talking about uh, uh, getting rid of affirmative action. What do you think about that for the school, uh, the people going to school, colleges and stuff? Well, I don't think we shouldn't be surprised by it, but it, I mean, it's, it's another, you know, another gimmick, they, another stunt they pull in to try mm -hmm. to hold us back. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what's real will prosper. It's nothing that you can do to stop it. You know, yes. no matter how hard you may try, we still coming. You know, what's for you is for you. And, and, and for the our people, our culture, mm -hmm. the Black culture, yeah. you know, they can't take what they did not give. We, we've been, you know, given this. It's in our blood. Yeah. And so as far as with affirmative action and, and, and stoppage of people are going to college. I, I don't want to say, because I, I went to like a diverse college. I went to Sam Houston. It was very diverse. Um, mm -hmm. But I was also, when it came to choosing, I, I was real set on going to an HBCU. But then the reason why I didn't is because in reality, in real life, the life, it, you know, is full of, you know, it's multicultural. It's not just with Black people. So that's why I didn't yeah. go to HBCU. Mm -hmm. But I see with affirmative action, 
as to, you know, why it would push a lot of our people to HBCUs. And I wouldn't be mad at that if it yeah. happened. If they were to stop affirmative action, go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We don't worry understand. about trying to get into a college, even though there are some good pristine colleges out there that are, uh, there's none HBCU. There are plenty of HBCUs that are, you know, top notch and up there and well respected. And so why not attend one of them? I wish I would have attended the HBCU, but um, in the grand scheme of things, I don't regret not attending the HBCU because now mm. I'm able to network with all people from all yes. different backgrounds of life, not just mm. with people of my culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think you were telling me about it. You have something uploaded today that you put on your YouTube channel. What did you upload today? Yes. Uh, so on Sundays, and I have a, a, a content schedule. Again, you got to go to my YouTube channel and check it out. So Sundays, we do our spiritual awareness. Mondays, we do our motivational Tuesdays, our social awareness. Wednesdays, I do our, uh, my podcast collaborations. Thursday, pop culture. And Fridays, uh, travel. And on, on Saturdays, sometimes I do a live um, so, but on Sundays, I, as I was telling you before we started, um, I do my spiritual content and I was just uploading one that has, um, it talks about the power of moving on and how God commands us to move on from our past and things that have hurt us, mistakes that we have made, how to let go of people that are no good for us in order for us to have the wonderful life he has planned for us. Isaiah 43, 18 states, do forget, for, excuse me, forget I'm sorry, forget the former things, do not hold on to the past, let go and move on, for God loves you, and he has a wonderful life planned for you, and so you have to remember that, and I just learned that scripture, and so um, yeah. that's something now I have to, you know, memorize and get stuck in my head, because that's a part of my healing process as well, and keeping my mental health in check, is letting go of the past, and, and stop revisiting, as well as reprogramming my mind, and so uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a spiritual walk for me as well. You know, I, I try to practice what I preach. So when I put these content out, I'm not only trying to motivate and encourage others, I'm doing this for myself. Um, I've noticed that, you know, in order to help myself, it helps by helping others, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. take your, the focus off yourself and try to help others and motivate others. It comes back to you in a good way. And so that's what I've been trying to do with how, you know, I deal with the process of, you know, grieving my mother and as well as my other family members, as well as, you know, dealing with, you know, my depression on end, just in life, still having things to go through. Um, like I said, when it comes with Third Eye Entertainment and Difference World, we advocate heavily for mental health awareness, including uh, in the Black community. And I just want to take this time for anybody out there listening and watching that's dealing with any type of mental health, you know, stress, illness, or anguish to please know that it is okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, being if you need to talk with a therapist, a family member, a friend, picking up a hobby, dropping a bad habit, cutting people off who mean you know well, mending broken bridges, even getting on medication if that is what needs to be done. Do yes. whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and keep yourself with, from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you. If you need or if you know anybody that may need these mental health resources that I'm about to share with you, please feel free to do so. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us or you guys can visit 988-lifeline.org. Life, and remember, although I am giving you these mental health resources, it's on you to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters, nobody else. Lastly, I want you guys to remember whatever trial and tribulation that you are going through at this time in your life, this too shall pass and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not an option. So therefore it's not worth it. So don't do it. Yes, that's great. Thank you for that. Yeah. that <laughs> uh, so uh, on your uh, on the book that you wrote, how do they can contact you to uh, purchase a copy or, or get a copy of your book? Okay, well, uh, just to give you a little background about the book first. Uh, the book, my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, have it right here is a book that's written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations 
about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. And um, so again, I want you guys to be advised that this is intended for a mature audience. It has sensitive content. And so if you can't take this type of heat, still come on to the kitchen. Just get you a <laughs> fire blanket. You'll be okay. Because that's the point of it all, to have these conversations that need to be had, especially with Juneteenth being tomorrow. Uh, we need to have these conversations that are often swept under the rug. Uh, people like to turn a blind eye to, and that's just what this book does. It flips the script. It plays the race world reversal in a most controversial manner. And the reason why I chose the controversial route is because I noticed that controversy gets a lot of attention. People mm -hmm. flock to that before they flock to anything else. And so once I hit them with that attention grabber, the controversial style, and I get their attention, they'll see that it's more than just about rubbing people the wrong way and 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 ruffling feathers and ring, unringing bells. And so it's more than so talking about unity. For those that can make it past the first three paradigms, I have them set up in four paradigms, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. And those that can make it through the first three and have common sense to know what it is that I'm really talking about and the points that I'm trying to make, they'll see it in hypothetical that it's more than, uh, you know, just about, like I said, rubbing people the wrong way. It's about unity, accountability, acknowledgement, coming up with ways where we can create systemic change instead of dwelling on systemic racism. And so, um, and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, like I said, the book, I've written it in a contra excuse me, a thought-provoking way. I don't like saying controversial. I say mm -hmm. thought-provoking because it, it yes. will get your attention. It will, you know, have you sharing your opinion. And so I have it set up in four main paradigms, historical, political, precedent, and hypo excuse me, hypothetical. And in each of these paradigms, I'm asking questions in regards to actual events, historical events and deaths that have occurred in the African-American community in America over time. And so, for instance, in historical paradigm, one of the questions I asked right off the bat, what if in 1619, Africans started dealing in illegal slave trading, whereas they kidnapped millions of English men, women, and children and brought them on slave ships to America? And then you'll see that thought-provoking illustration where you have the white slaves in shackles and chains and some trying to jump from ships like our people did and with the black slave owners and slave masters ship masters whipping them and you have that all throughout the book asking these types of questions with the historical events and deaths that have occurred in the african-american community and the, um, from down on from you know political deaths to you know precedent death what's going on you know such as you know with trayvon martin tamir rice you know like all these protests we happen to have you know with brianna taylor i have them included as well and so, uh, and as well, it's not just about black and white. That's another thing I want to know. It's not just about black and white. It, I have something for everybody. I include the Native Americans, Hispanics, Muslims, uh, LGBTQ uh, community is included as well. And so, like I said, it's not just about, you know, peeing people off. It's more than that. I'm trying to get your attention in the way I'm going about it. It is a controversial way. But again, for those that, you know, have, you know, enough sense, and the uh, uh, maturity to make it through the first three, you know, tough paradigms and make it to hypothetical that it would see is not just about, you know, the, the rough side of it. It's about the betterment of the cause. Okay, this happened, but what can we do now to change and move forward? Yes, you know, and okay. I'm well aware that change doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen with just one person moaning and complaining. It takes a community coming together time and time again. And so, you know, what if, Tina, what if this is a generation that plants a seed for the next generation? And I'm well aware that, you know, it be a lot of people that dislike this book. But like I said, you go where you celebrate it and not where you tolerate it. And I learned that from number 45. Uh, this man, he's he was in office for four years, caused all that chaos. And at the end of it, he still had people, you know, rooting for him, good, bad, and ugly. And what that has taught me is that no matter what you sell it to the public, it's always somebody out there that's willing to buy it. So again, yeah. you go where you celebrate it and not where you tolerate it. Tolerate, you know, yeah. Tink being the perfect time for me to promote my book and, you know, the message that I'm trying to bring, I'm going to go all in to any and everybody. And I know my people will understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's one. Uh, so how do, how do they purchase it? So you go to my website, differenceworld.net. Again, that's spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T-S-W-O-R-L-D.net. 
and you'll go there. You'll get your copy there. Uh, you can also leave reviews for me, um, as well as with my YouTube channel. I try to direct a lot of my traffic to my website and my YouTube channel as I'm trying to build. Uh, so go to, again, my YouTube channel, Difference World YT. Come and learn and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. So when I drop content, uh, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn what's going on. Um, other than that, as well as for anybody out there that's looking for motivational speakers, or if you're looking to do any uh, future collaborations, you can look me up on my website and you book your girl. I'm free of charge, as well as check out all my other social media handles, uh, my Instagram, my Twitter. I'm learning TikTok, you guys, so bear with me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to study it before I jump into it. You know, I'm, I'm, I like to study, you know, or do my, my homework before I just jump into it and, and go Hail Mary's in the sky. So yeah. Um, but yeah, that's where you guys can find me. And again, I appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Please keep it coming and don't stop. Uh, uh, thank you again, Miss Tina, for having me on your show. I truly appreciate it. Yeah. Um, everybody out there again, listening and watching, remember to keep your mental health in check. And uh, as well as when it comes to going after your dreams and goals, remember you have to manifest, plan and prepare for it. And it will come to you. Difference world. Come and learn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, the name of my show is called Bodacious Dreams with a Radical Faith. So what is your bodacious dream? To win the Pulitzer Prize for this book, What If Controversial Paradigm Shift. Oh, okay. That is going what? to ring the world's bell. Uh -huh. and put me on the map to take care of me and my family, bring me, you know, generational wealth and create residual income. Mm, okay. And, and I become one of the top influential motivational speakers of the world. Okay. It's a lot. I have a lot of dreams and goals. <laughs> a lot of dreams and goals. Yes, that, that's like good, a, though. I'm a dreamer, too. So I am there with you. Uh, yeah. So uh, and radical faith, when I say radical faith, some people say um, it's not just, just religion. It's also faith in yourself. So you yes, have built absolutely. that faith in yourself, right? That's so exactly what I was thinking. About that. And it's funny that you say radical faith, because like I said yesterday, um, I went to go meet with Mr. Uh, Martin at his event. He had all the way on the south side on South Post Oak. Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm on the east side of Houston and I had my nephew with me. And so and I don't have a car right now. And so we had to, I had to do what I had to do and step out on radical faith and just believe in myself and in God. And yeah. so and I, before I got there, I was like, man, I don't know if anybody's going to be there, if I'm even actually going to get a chance to meet him, because I tried to before earlier this year when he was here for the voting and I didn't get the chance to. And so what my intention was to do was to go there, network, pass out my business cards, try to get some reviews and reaction for my, for, I was going to do a YouTube video to get my reviews and reaction for people looking at my book, as well as talk with him. But it didn't work out that way. He, when yeah. I walked in, me and him, me and my nephew walked in, they were already in panel and speaking. And so he was already on stage talking. So what I had to do was wait till it was over with. And, you know, everybody was meeting and taking pictures with him. I just had to wait my turn. And when it came up, I walked up to him and met him. And I was like, Mr. Martin, I'm here. You know, I've been emailing this man and, and actually having conversations with him in correspondence for over a year now yeah. about getting on his podcast show. And so I was like, well, now you see my face and now, you know, I'm serious about it. And so I'm one step closer. First, it started off as me emailing and yes. me thinking he wasn't going to respond. And then he actually started to respond. Uh -huh. And now I'm, I've actually met with him face to face and have a picture of him with my book and my nephew. And so, uh -huh. and I wrote it a year ago. I, I, I wrote it on my Twitter. I, I, uh, Mr. Martin, you don't know me by now, but I'm uh, right now, but I'm going to be on your show soon. And so yeah. my motto is Talk it to your radical faith. <laughs> yes. My motto is manifest, plan, prepare. And when I say manifest, plan, prepare, that means uh, fixing yourself from the inside out, preparing yourself from the inside out with manifest, manifest, remove all the negative doubt. The they say, I can't do it. Remove all of that from your mind. Reprogram your mind with faith and positive affirmations that you can do it. When you're planning it, plan it out on paper, plan, you know, how you're going to achieve the goal, have a backup plan, have an exit plan. You can't plan for the unknown, but you can expect that it's going to come. And when it does, just know that whatever trial and tribulation you're going to face, you're going to get through it. This too shall pass. So don't trip or don't, don't, don't falter to it. Keep going. Yeah. As well as when it comes to preparation, I say prepare from the inside out. I mean, get your house in order from the inside out. Go get your mental health in check. Go get your physical health in check. Go get your spiritual health in check. Go fix your financial house. Uh, like I said, cut people off for me, you know, well, men and broken bridges. 
uh, letting go of the past and moving on from it so that whatever you're manifesting and planning for when it comes to you, you will be prepared for it. You will know how to handle it. You won't squander it like how I did when I was younger and in my 20s when I had a good, a lot of good opportunities coming my way and I squandered it. Why? Because I was afraid of it. I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't feel that I was yes. worthy of it. And so manifest, plan, and prepare for whatever it is in life that you're feeling you're destined for. And it will surely come to you. So yours yeah. is radical faith. Mine is manifest, plan, and prepare. And yesterday, yeah. I had full on radical faith, my girl. Like yes. <laughs> oh, that's it great. worked out for me because in the end, and I also did some networking. I, I, I met with the newspaper, a, a, a lady that owned the article here in Houston, the Defender. And I gave her my business card and we talked. And so I got to network. I got to meet Mr. Martin and hand him my business card and let him see my book. And just let it be known that I'm going to be on the show and I wasn't going to stop. He also noted that next year, what he's trying to do is get a permanent uh, event for Juneteenth starting 2024 here in Houston. So next year, it's going to be like a Juneteenth festival, like the first annual Juneteenth festival here in Houston. And I told him, I'm going to be a part of it. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> yes, he was like, okay, yeah, I like yes. that. And so yeah, like, trust in God and yeah. everything. <laughs> and so, and I, radical faith, I'm stepping out on God. I'm believing in myself. I have nothing mm -hmm. else to lose, but everything to gain. And so I'm going for mine. I often tell people, either they come up like Cardi B or they come back like Robert D. There is no more in between. That's what the yeah. pandemic has taught us, man. Life is too yeah. short. You yes. Go for yours now. Yeah, yeah. You only get one life. You got to live it to the fullest. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Be a blessing. <laughs> I told you, it's Texas weather. Got me sneezy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, well, I thank you for coming on the show. It was uh, nice talking to you. Thank uh, you, Miss Tina. Keep it. That radical faith up okay yes ma'am you as well you started yeah. it <laughs> yes okay <laughs> all right um, all right you guys and thank you so much again for having me and again remember you got a crown on your head and you're rocking it oh so well and thank you to everybody else out there that was listening and watching it be sure to like share comment and subscribe to your podcast and my youtube channel yeah i remember whatever it is in life that you guys are feeling you're destined for you got to manifest plant and prepare for it and it will surely come to you guys difference world come and learn Thank you, thank you.